Hi, I'm Casey Walker. I'm an attorney and I'm the founder of VA Disability Group. I'm a former VA Disability Adjudicator, otherwise known as a Raider. The purpose of today's discussion is to discuss the FEAT Disability Benefits Questionnaire or Compensation and Pension Examination, CMP exam. I want to prepare you for it, but I also want to talk about, before we get into that, I want to talk about what you need to do before you go to the exam. And this is probably the most critical part of your claim that veterans fail at routinely. Here's what you need to do. Symptom logs. You can go to our website. It's linked in the description below. Or you can make your own up. But you need to make a symptom log, which is a contemporaneous diary or journal of your daily foot symptoms. Pain, discomfort, can't walk, hurting at night, elevating feet, whatever that is. Write it in your daily journal. Additionally, write a sworn statement or a written statement. Send it to the VA. Tell them every symptom you're experiencing over the past six months to a year. Communicate. You have to give the examiner something. You can't just hope to show up and hope that they believe everything you say if you don't have some type of documentation that they've, they're able to review before you go into the examination. Most importantly, be treated. Don't go into the exam insisting that you need orthotics if you never attempted to get orthotics for your feet. Go to the foot doctor at the local VA or at your treating professional and try to be prescribed orthotics if they're needed. Get it documented. If you need an x-ray or you need a CT or you need an MRI of the foot, get it documented. Don't hope the examiner trusts that you are able to assess yourself from a medical professional standpoint. Let's talk about what you can expect at the examination. Most examinations follow a similar framework. They're gonna look at your subjective history. This is where you just tell them everything that's wrong with your feet or whatever condition it is. And they're going to annotate and they're gonna become scriveners. They're gonna just write down everything you tell them. They don't necessarily agree with what you're telling them. They might just write it down. The next step of the, of the examination is the actual physical examination. It's at this point in time where they should be manipulating your body, especially for the joints. They should be maneuvering your feet they should have you stand, they should have you walk to see if you pronate and if your feet are moving in different directions that would cause or lend themselves to a disability. That is the physical examination part. They should also be looking at whether there's any objective imaging or testing in the record that shows MRIs, CTs, x-rays, so that uh, they will be able to annotate accordingly for the adjudicator within the disability compensation services. And then they will also be looking at treatments. Have you been prescribed orthotics? Have you been prescribed any type of therapy? Have you did you actually attend the therapy for your feet? These are all the things that hopefully you've documented before you go into the examination report. There will also be a diagnosis section. Uh, be advised, without a diagnosis, you're not getting disability compensation. You need to have a medical condition. Uh, now there are some unique exceptions here, but you don't wanna work on the exception. You wanna work on the diagnosis, trust me. You need to have a diagnosis. Medical professionals don't like to refute medical professionals. So if you have a diagnosis of record before you go, before you go into that examination, the likelihood of an examiner refuting that previous medical professional is low. So I would get a diagnosis of record before you go in for your examination report. Another consideration, as you prepare to go into this examination on the day of the exam, don't go in being a tough guy, but also don't embellish. Don't go in there and oversell something. Just be honest and be credible. Don't say something that you don't have. Don't tell them you have arthritis if you don't have arthritis. That's gonna be an MRI or an X-ray documenting that, and you shouldn't be lying. Uh, so don't embellish. and. Uh, be advised that the point of this discussion here today is the, the big picture, the common conditions. I'm not going to be covering every foot condition under the sun. There are a lot of foot conditions. You have hammer toe, you have metatarsalgia, you have a, just a litany of foot conditions. The foot's complex. We're going to cover the common things here because otherwise the discussion would be way too long. So what are the common conditions that we're going to discuss? Plantar fasciitis is one of the most common ones. Hallux valgus, which is otherwise known as bunions, is another common one. And then they have this generalized category the VA does for other foot injuries. And then they have all the specific ones. So what would other foot injuries be? Maybe you have an Achilles tendonitis or something of that effect. So we're gonna try to cover these to the extent we possibly can here in the CMP examination report. Before we actually cover those, let's discuss different ways you can actually get the service connected. What are the theories of service connection? Well, generally, you need to have some type of incident or event on active duty. So specifically, if you had foot problems that were reported on active duty and they're in your service treatment records or your STRs, that would be the in-service event. If you still have those problems today, you're probably fairly likely 
that an examiner will say that your symptoms on active duty are a continuation of what your diagnosis is today. That's direct theory of service connection. There's also one as known as secondary. Let's say you had a right ankle condition and that right ankle pain somehow moved into your foot of the right foot. Maybe that would be a secondary. Maybe the way you're walking because of your right ankle condition is causing right foot problems. So that would be an example of secondary service connection. Another example could be something known as a chronic condition under 38 CFR 3.309. What this is, is where a veteran has arthritis or uh, one of these chronic conditions that are listed in the regulation on active duty or to a compensable degree within one year of separating from active duty. And compensable really just means symptomatic, that you had pain or you reported symptoms. So, so long as you really reported that you had foot problems and you had some type of diagnosis of arthritis of the foot, that would be a chronic condition. Some people refer to it as a presumptive condition. I don't think it's a presumptive condition on a technicality, but uh, nonetheless, the VA should award service connection under a theory of a chronic condition within one year of separating to a compensable level. So those are the different ways that you can get service connection for the fee. One other consideration is, especially for the fee, if you were an infantryman or a rifleman, or you had a job that really put you on your feet a lot in those military boots, communicate it. Let the examiner know that you were in boots for four years, six years, 10 years, 20 years straight, and you were walking five, 10 miles two to three times a week in those military boots because you're more likely to develop foot problems when you have that type of MOS or job qualifier within the military. So now let's take a look at the regulations. Today we're gonna to look at 38 CFR 4.71A. This is commonly referred to as the rating schedule. This is where the VA tells you what symptoms equal what evaluations. They try to cover most medical conditions. For the feet, there's a lot of conditions. Let's start with plantar fasciitis, which is diagnostic code 5269. Now you'll see there that a veteran or a claimant is eligible for benefits at the 10% level if you just have a diagnosis. But if you have surgical and non-surgical intervention and you have no relief, so if you have orthotics or you have surgical treatment and you have no relief on one foot, then you'll get 20%. If you have surgical and non-surgical intervention on both feet, you might be eligible for 30%. So in the feet, it's important that you communicate whether it's unilateral or bilateral. That's a takeaway for plantar fasciitis and whether you wear orthotics and whether you've had surgical treatment. So plantar fasciitis is the most common condition veterans claim. And the three things that are critical is orthotic use, surgical intervention, and whether it's unilateral or bilateral. Next, let's talk about diagnostic code 5280 which covers hallux valgus. This is commonly referred to as bunions. Uh, sometimes people refer to a surgery of bunions as a bunionectomy, uh, but it's common. And a lot of military members get it because of the orthotics and the, or the shoes that they wear and the footwear that they wear for years on end. If you have a bunionectomy, you are automatically eligible for 10% under diagnostic code 5280. Resection of the metatarsal head is how you treat with surgery, a bunion. So if you had bunion surgery, you had a resection of the metatarsal head. There's really no other way to treat hallux valgus. They have to reduce the metatarsal head, which requires surgery. So let's, let's look at the examination report that the examiner is going to complete when you go in for your foot examination. Let's go to section four of the disability benefits questionnaire. This is equivalent to the examination report that the examiner will complete. The DBQs are public facing. The examination report that the examiner uses is the same thing. Section four specifically gets into the non-surgical treatment and it gets into the orthotics. This is exactly what we looked at when we looked at the diagnostic code. Now let's take a look at section seven, which covers hallux valgus. You'll notice in hallux valgus, which is the bunions, they're going to look at whether you've had resection of the metatarsal head. This is exactly what we looked at within the rating schedule, which is the regulations. So the DBQ report and the examination report mimics verbatim the regulations and the criteria therein. This is the report that the examiner will complete. The real takeaway for you is make sure you communicate any surgeries and any orthotics that you've had for your foot problems. Any discomfort, pain, limitation of motion, or inability to ambulate, communicate it. Don't just hope that the, vet, that the examiner knows that. So I hit the high points of the DBQ. Let's talk about special considerations of the feet. One very common one that veterans experience is flat feet. I wanna claim for flat feet. What about flat feet? Well, a lot of veterans go on to active duty with a waiver having the congenital condition of flat feet. The VA does not treat flat feet as a disability. They, can treat, they treat it as a congenital condition. And congenital conditions are not compensable with the VA by law. So it's unlikely you will receive compensation for flat feet. There are exceptions. You can have what's called acquired 
flat feet. And that's where, because of the boots and the footwear you wore in the military, you might have developed some type of flat foot condition. That's the exception. In the overwhelming majority of cases, flat feet are not compensable. Now you'll notice on the DBQ that the flat foot section covers about two and a half, three pages of it. But again, that is usually not awarded. Another consideration is when you go to the examination, don't tell the examiner that you have an orthotic, that you use the orthotics daily and that they, they really don't help, but you try to use them all the time if you don't have it on that day. Because a foot doctor is going to look, or the examiner is going to look to see if you have orthotics that day. They're gonna ask you to take your shoes off in order to examine you. And if you don't have orthotics in your shoes and you tell them that you always wear them and they don't help, your credibility is shot. Be honest and don't set yourself up for failure. Additionally, if you tell the examiner that you use a cane, you should show up at the exam with a cane. If you tell them you struggle to ambulate without the use of some assistive device like a cane, you should have that cane with you. So that's the end of our discussion of the CMP report. What are the takeaways here? Number one, document, document, document. Get it documented and bring it to the examiner on the day of the examination. Number two, don't be a tough guy. Let the examiner know as he's manipulating your foot if you're discomforted. He can't read your mind. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Check out the description below for the links we discuss here and subscribe to our channel if you found it helpful.